Good day for Boise State. Washington State, number 21 in the college football playoff rankings. Oregon, number one. Uh, Those two teams are Boise State's best win and maybe the best individual loss in all of college football. Remember, though Oregon is playing much better now than they were way back then, there is some legitimate merit to the narrative of, hey, Ohio State went to Austin Stadium, lost by one point. Boise State went to Austin Stadium, lost by three points. Do I think Oregon could beat Boise State at home by more than three points if they played today? I do. I do 100%. Would they beat him by 20 to 30? No, I don't think so. Boise State's playing good football, and Ashton Genty's really good, but Maddox Matson has come along as well. The passing game, I, I think, has really taken strides from the early part of the season to where they can play some, some solid complementary football. No one is going to touch them in the Mountain West, right? Right, I mean... Crazy things have never happened in November before. I mean, when have we ever in a college football season seen upsets take place that no one sees coming? Like, that that never happens in this sport. So, Boise State, you're completely and solidly fine. I'm not picking him to lose any of their games right now. But you got to watch out for Colorado State because that's a team that can meet uh, Boise in the Mountain West Championship game. And you have to watch out for UNLV, who Boise State beat earlier this year on the road but is still, I think, a really good football team. So the question becomes, with the Broncos ranked 12th in the playoff rankings, and as I talked about earlier this week on the show, could Boise State become a team that is getting a bye in the first round? Yeah, entirely possible. What if BYU loses once and then doesn't win the Big 12 championship game and they're an at-large playoff team at 11-2? and What if that happens? Where is the Big 12 champion going to be ranked? Are they going to catapult Boise State? I don't know. I can't guarantee that. What if Miami doesn't win the ACC? Then you'd have a chaos scenario in which they wouldn't. the highest-ranked conference champions would probably include Boise State, and they could get a bye. But the question becomes, in, in the most realistic terms, who pushes the Broncos, if anyone? So the easy answer is Army. Because Army is 8-0, they are ranked number 25 in the country, they're in the American Conference, so they will have the opportunity to play for a conference championship game, and if they go undefeated, they'd have the undefeated argument. And last year, if you'd had a 12-team playoff, Liberty, because they were undefeated in a conference worse than the American, Conference USA, they got in over the American Conference champion SMU to the New Year's Six Bowl game. They got blown out by Oregon, but still they got in because they were 13-0. What would the committee do? Can Army really catapult themselves however many spots up they would need to go? Could you have a wild, crazy world? Just ponder this. Where a Big 12 or ACC champion is ranked below Army? Probably not. Pro- probably not. I'm just I'm just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. I don't think that noodle is quite done in the boiling pot of water. I think that falls off the wall there. But... I think that for Army, their ability to be, high, to be the highest ranked G5 team is incredibly real. I don't think Boise State loses a regular season game. But remember, they have to win the Mountain West. Would Boise State get in as an at-large with a second loss and a non-conference championship season? I don't think so. I think the committee would leave them out. And if that were to take place, you'd have Army as a threat. Tulane could be a threat who should have beaten Kansas State earlier this year, but did not at home. They've got two losses, but they're 5-0 and in American Conference play. They still have to play Memphis. They still have to play Navy, which are a couple of quality wins in the American pickup. Watch to see if Tulane and John Sumrall, the new hire this offseason, can, can continue to keep things rolling. They've been playing much, much better football over the last couple of weeks. Memphis is out of the running. They've got two losses right now. I don't think they could do it, but they've got two losses in conference play. I mean, Tulane, though, 5-0 and against American teams. How about UNLV? How, how about UNLV? There's a world in which they emerge in the Mountain West Championship game. And let me tell you, if they do that with a couple of Power 4 wins, they should have beaten Syracuse. They did beat Kansas. They did beat Illinois. Like, UNLV, UNLV is not out of, of the playoff hunt. And for those who love the expanded playoff, and I understand there are a lot of, uh, of benefits to it, um, sorry, Houston, not Illinois. Sorry, 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 Houston, Houston. I thought I misspoke, and I was like, eh, I don't think that was Illinois. No, no, it's Houston all the way back in week one, who's playing much better football, by the way. But right now, UNLV has got wins against Kansas, against Houston, a close loss to Syracuse. They've beaten Fresno State. They lost to Boise State by five. If they were to beat the Broncos in the Mountain West Championship game, they could absolutely, if they haven't lost between now and then, 
they'd be a two loss team and they would have avenged their one loss. That's a compelling resume with your other loss being to uh, an ACC team that'll probably make a bowl game in Syracuse this year and to lose by three points. Yeah, I can see a world world where UNLV is able to reemerge and get themselves as the highest ranked group of five conference champion. Is it likely? No, but I mean, is it completely ridiculous? Also, no, they need Colorado State to lose. But UNLV goes at Hawaii, hosts San Diego State, at San Jose State, hosts Nevada. They're going to be favored in every single one of those football games. So if you win those four, you're 10 and two and a chance to avenge your loss. And historically, the college football playoff committee has looked very favorably on teams that lose to someone in the regular season and then come back and beat them in the conference championship game and say, eh, that kind of cancels it out right there. So they might look at UNLV as a one loss team, but then... With UNLV currently unranked, would they surpass Army? Would they fly by if Army were to win the American or Tulane? UNLV would be a two loss. Tulane would be a two loss. Or, uh, UNLV would have avenged their loss. Tulane wouldn't have had the opportunity to do that, but they wouldn't have lost a game in American Conference play. That That's a realistic chaos scenario if Boise State does not win the Mountain West Championship game, which I think they absolutely have to do in order to make the college football playoff. I don't think they'll get in as an at-large because they've got the loss to Oregon. They would have another loss probably to UNLV or Colorado State or someone in the conference title game. And I just don't see them as a two-loss team from the group of five ranks getting in over two-loss SEC, two-loss Big 12 even, three-loss SEC, or two-loss Big 10. I, I think that hurdle's too hard to get over. Let me throw another one at you, and this is not going to be on anybody's radar right now. Louisiana. Louisiana in the Sun Belt is a 7-1 and one football team. Louisiana, they, they got to win the rest of their games, no doubt about it. But Louisiana is a team that if they keep winning games, can certainly emerge. They're 4-0 in the Sun Belt right now. They've got Arkansas State this week. Not a lot of people are going to be watching that. Louisiana is about a 17-point favorite. Then they play two more home games against South Alabama and Troy before they play Louisiana Monroe on rivalry week. If they keep winning and are victorious in the Sun Belt and Boise State doesn't win the Mountain West and Army doesn't win the American, and maybe it's Colorado State winning the Mountain West or UNLV with three losses winning the Mountain West or something like that, watch out for Louisiana. So they're not on, anybody, on, on anybody's radar at the moment. But just know that it is, it is entirely possible for them to emerge. I don't know that there are any other serious G5 playoff contenders that I, I feel confident saying, yeah, they can make a run. They can make a push. Memphis was in the running for that despite their loss to Navy earlier this season, but they lost to UTSA last week. And UTSA with Jeff Trailer, who was a one-time candidate potentially for the Texas A&M job, I think the Aggies are pretty help or happy with uh, Mike Elko as their head coach. He's doing a, a phenomenal job, even though they lost last week. Losing to UTSA, I think knocks Memphis out of it. James Madison, that was a pick earlier this year that you could have said, hey, what if they go unbeaten again? They're really good. They lost this guy named Kurt Signetti as their head coach. They made a good hire, but they've got two losses. I don't think they can get out of the Sun Belt and into the college football playoff, but Louisiana, just, just wait for it. And for all the playoff expansionists out there, the hardcore ones that love the format and such, just wait until a 10-2 and two Colorado or a 9-3 and three Ole Miss doesn't get into the playoff, but... 12 and 1 Louisiana does. That's going to ruffle some feathers. It's not likely. It's not likely, but it's not impossible.